Radiant Team Ban. Dio Team Ban. Radiant Team Ban. Dio Team Ban. Radiant Team Pick. You have 10 seconds left. You have 5 seconds left. But yeah, regarding the leagues, I know that ESL were trying to make a bid. And beforehand, I think they were scheduled to do most of the first round of leagues, so... If they get it again, then you're pretty... You guys should be pretty good. Nah, I know, but that, that like... Gonna use that. Especially right now. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Dire team pick. Faceless Void. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Hello and welcome to the Epic League where we are getting back into Division 2 matches. It's the final time this week where we'll be having some Division 2 matches on the day. And uh, we're going to start things off with Yellow Submarine versus Team Empire. My name is Nomad and joining me is Theban. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I saw you were playing a game and I was like, ah, oh, it's okay, it's game through you usually pretty quickly. And then uh, I looked at what heroes were playing and you're against a Drow and a Zeus and I was just like, oh god, <laughs> oh no, that's some good high ground defense. But all good, we're back into the game and uh, we got ourselves a draft already, Yellow Submarine versus Team Empire. These guys are wasting absolutely no time in getting some heroes picked up. We're going to start things up with a Phoenix and a Faceless Void for Yellow Submarine, one of their favorite combinations to open with. Meanwhile, Team Empire, they've grabbed the Magnus and the Lena, a classic. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant Team Dire Ban. Team Ban. You have 10 seconds yeah. left. Yeah, yeah. They can play it so well as well. Yeah, I mean, what, what are we thinking Team Empire's left. odds are for this game? Because I'm not sure I'm feeling too good about them this game. I mean, Sailor Submarine have just been smashing everyone recently. They looked so strong. Dire team pick. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant Team, pick. The yeah. Wakes. Yeah, and they had the fourth pick as well, so uh, they could have defended their ban, uh, their pick pretty nicely with a couple of bans there. But uh, they will go for the Undying next for Team Empire. So uh, grab the Undead Boy to uh, try and buff themselves up a little bit. I mean, these are looking like very strong lanes. I will say you that much for Team Empire. Left. Dire 
dire team pick. Witch doctor. You have ten seconds left. No. You have five yeah, seconds that, left. LSA, very long range stun, which uh, Witch Doctor's not going to enjoy too much. So Team Empire looking to uh, probably grab themselves a carry hero, I'd guess, here. Or maybe they want to save that for last, but I imagine they probably want their mid for last. So what are the options? Yeah, Jug looks pretty good. Deals with the Phoenix. Not bad versus Void. Pretty good versus Witch Doctor. Radiant Team, pick Doom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant Team Bad. Bad Rider! Yeah. Yep, uh, they see this and Yellow Submarine's answer is like, well, you know, if, if, if you're not going to get any kind of soft committal you spells, then we're just going to grab a Batrider. Well. This guy can just fly Radiant around the sides of the team man. fight, poke in at Team Empire, constantly laying up these napalms. So there's Dial nothing they can do about it, though. They can't run at him and try and catch him because they don't have those abilities. Oh my goodness, look at its bands. Yeah. You have 10 seconds left. You have five <laughs> seconds left. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Very worrying for Team Empire. I think this draft has gone quite badly for them to put it uh, put it lightly, but what are the strengths of their draft on Team Empire? Ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I, I like the Lena Magnus. You know, I didn't like it even as much as Sosa Void Phoenix, but I still thought it was good. Uh, but then they kind of just, yeah, the Undying and Doom, this middle phase didn't really look too hot from them. And now a Doom from Yellow Submarine. There's no catch! There is no catch! All right, so. Let's just uh, sign up everything they need from this final page. They need, they need some catch, they need some stun, they need a, a, a carry hero, and there needs to be left. an empowerable hero. Mm. You have five seconds left. Yeah. Ricky could be very interesting. I like that a lot. Rumble. It's true. That's true. Zeus isn't the hero he used to be. He is. He is very farm focused right now. Phantom but they go for the PL. Your hero. Hmm. Nah, it's not enough for you. 
I gotta agree. I, I, I don't know. This, this isn't enough for me, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe there is uh, some hope for Team MP. No, I don't, I don't think it's like the worst draft matchup I've ever seen, but it's not looking too hot either. And considering Yellow Submarine are already off over Team Skill Wise coming into it, I'm very worried for Team Empire here in game number one, but maybe they can pull off the uh, the unbelievable. I mean, what is their win condition? How do they pull ahead of Yellow Submarine in this game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if he plays too passively, then I think they might start running into trouble on the side of uh, Team Empire. I mean, well, yeah, Old Submarine, they have so many ways to play this game. I mean, pretty much every one of their heroes can kick off. Like, if, it was, if the Zeus has a good enough game, he's going to be an absolute pain to deal with. His damage output is going to be a big threat for the side of Team Empire. If the Void has a good game, then he's just going to, you know, these are looking like pretty, pretty free Chronos. The only thing which is going to stop him getting a kill in Chrono is an LSA which again, pretty unlikely, and uh, also very easy to dodge with that chrono speed. And then also you've got this Batrider who, as mentioned before, you know, this guy has nothing to slow him down, nothing to stop him just running heroes in circles. So if any of these guys has a pretty good lane, then I'm pretty worried for Team Empire. But uh, nevertheless, it's not all doom and gloom, you know, Dota, anything can happen. So let's get into game number one of Yellow Submarine versus Team Empire here in the Epic League Division 2. It's a lovely Wednesday morning, and uh, we're about to watch Yellow Submarine possibly... Uh, destroy Team Empire unless they can pull up a really good fight here. I mean, Empire is this team which I've watched for a very long time. You know, this is the duo, the trio of um, Sayu, um, Ekinat. Well, it's, it's basically Sayu and Ekinat who are the two which have stayed together through this Empire team and kind of tried to uh, shape this organization, shape some teams and make it happen. And it looked very promising in the past, but unfortunately in this situation, you know, we haven't quite seen the same flair coming out from these two players to uh, play up into a full roster and make themselves like a really competitive team. We've seen promises of it in the past, but right now it's 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 not there. But maybe maybe this is the game where we start to see them or this is the series. We start to see them really coming out to play some Dota in this uh in this tournament. Zekanart. Oh is there trying to split him up nicely here and they will be able to do exactly that. So he's forced to use a decay onto one hero. So bad continuing to tick him down. He will have another decay in three seconds, which should probably be enough to keep him alive. Uh so bad gonna keep on going. He can actually turns around here. Not quite sure if this is the right plan as he's getting burnt down under the tower, pops a stick, will survive. Getting very low on this undying though, and it's gonna be forced to walk back to base as well. Yeah. <laughs> you wish. Mhm. Mm Deny. Yeah, I can maybe see it, and I, th I think Void Witch Doctor can feel strong uh, if, if you're able to kind of get the Void in the right place to do some damage and start getting some harassment off with the Time Lock, because otherwise the Witch Doctor just doesn't feel, you know, Witch Doctor needs his team to harass with him, otherwise it just doesn't do enough. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got like this ramping damage, which is really nice from the Maledict against those big tanky heroes. Meanwhile, up at the top. Oh, I am, dude. He is so fun to watch. I love this guy. He's, he's so aggressive. And the new Thompson. Yeah. 
his invoker yesterday playing with that io just like just jumping around the map getting so much work done was just amazing to watch meanwhile the top lane smiling knight taking a lot of damage here he's got those three stacks of sticky napalm upon him but they can't finish the job yeah okay <laughs> yeah this guy's actually on about 80 percent health <laughs> Yeah, the moment it gets to 20, he's just like, yep, fill me up, chief. Yeah. So, so far, not too bad. Uh, Gwenbliad's doing very well in this mid lane against the Zeus, surprisingly. With this empower, he's just able to uh, secure himself a lot of CS. Yep. Yeah, they, they need to have an idea of what, what's going on in here. They need to uh, try and invade into the enemy side of the map, get some vision, get some information, and uh, find out exactly what's going on. Uh, it's, uh... Yeah, I cannot make any stacks, but they need to be able to defend them as well. But he does actually have the, uh, the Observer down. I wonder if Sobad saw that. Could maybe get a bit of suspicion. <laughs> it's four minutes into the game. How does he even manage this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering what the players here. I think they kind of need to take an early point in Tombstone and then just let the mag go into those stacks with the Empower. Or maybe the Doom can come... Nah, Doom doesn't do enough damage to take the stacks. Yeah, it is. It is. Bit of action at bottom lane as uh, Petashara and Sayu just kind of trading into Yatoro and Miposhka. Petashara not really coming off too great from that. Neither is Sayu, to be honest, but they will do enough to defend the bounties and allow them to come back in and grab it. Money to burn. You get nothing. Oh, look at it go! <laughs> uh oh. Sayu in some trouble. Does stun up Yatsuro, but in comes Toronto Tokyo with the Thunder God's Wrath to get that kill. Nice timing on level 6. Oh no, oh no, the stacks. They need to do something, they need to come and contest this. Ekonati's screaming, he's saying, guys, the precious, precious stacks are being taken away. Gwimblad's gonna go and get the vision and realize they're gone. Collapse has already taken them, and now, well, in comes Sobad, swooping on across. Toronto Tokyo joining in the neighborhood as well, already taking a ton of them with the Arc Lightning. They need to do something about the Sleeping Team Empire. Stun out onto two, not bad. Gwimblad comes in, drops the RP, turns it around. They will both die. They did take a decent amount as Toronto Tokyo still trying to finish the job, but also realizing he needs to get out of here as uh, the rest of the creeps looking like they're going to go the way of Akanat due to that tombstone. But Toronto Tokyo would be a much bigger kill than this. They get baited in the stacks. They were the sweet, sweet honey pot all along and Yellow Submarine could not resist. And now they lose three heroes. He's about to pop. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Not bad, Mpushka, not bad. Meanwhile, Collapse getting jumped on up at top here. 
or well yeah who is who is jumping on who he's looking for it lasso comes down goodbye smiling knight he's gonna get run down no chance of surviving this one yeah, collapse baby. for some revenge <laughs> yeah pretty insane <laughs> yeah i think this last kind of few minutes of gameplay really just just highlight why it's so strong to make stacks because there's no way it can go bad for you like it, we just see here you know that they, they came to try and invade but you've got these tp points all around the jungle so it's so easy for Team Empire to defend these stacks and get the turnaround kills, which is exactly what happens. You know, it's it's there's really no punishment for uh, making stacks anymore. It's just so hard. There's so many TP points. It's so hard to contest. Yeah. Toronto Tokyo could be in some trouble here. Gwimbliad, he's got himself the haste rune. He's going to be able to control them up beautifully. And then they just get off the ultimate. The Chronosphere comes down to try and keep him alive. That should be enough to keep the Zeus healthy. They'll be able to turn it around onto Gwimbliad. He's going to try and skewer himself away. Is that going to be enough? It certainly is not. He's going to get cooked up. And that is going to be instead the Magnus going down and narrowly, narrowly saving the lives of the Zeus and the, uh, I think the Batrider as well there. No, it wasn't the Bat, it was the... Radiance bottom tower right next to each other in that RP. Yeah, for sure. Saved his life. Yeah, if you can find him. Yeah, if he doesn't do that, then his team's going to be in trouble. It's their big team fighting ability along with the supernova. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is yeah. fading fast. The thing is, though, like, even if you do drop the Doom onto Yatra, you know, the damage output Dyer's from the Zeus and the control from attack. the Batrider is going to be super scary to play into as well. So. Is under attack. There is little it can do. And Tom's all around. These are some happy carries. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is feeling its mortality. Feels very, very good as. Oh, okay. All right. Pedashar gets dropped. He did drop down the Doom onto the Batrider, but it's not going to make much of a difference. So, Sayo coming in over here. He has got the Laguna Blade. Might just try and pop it, but he can't get the range off onto the Batrider. Batrider makes it away, and they will not be able to finish off the Bat. The Doom dies for nothing. And that is Doom on cooldown. Man, they needed to make something happen with these spells. I mean, the point I was going to make earlier is that with the Doom and once he gets a Blink Dagger with the RP, they really need to make sure they're attack. finding something with they every single use of these ultimates because that's one of the ways they can utilize their heroes to put some really nice pressure onto Yellow Submarine, which they need to do. The combination. Pedishara, though, he's... He's pretty tanky. Yeah, luckily they've got the sun ray. It's a decent amount, but Ekinar comes in, drops that heal. It isn't going to be enough to bring down Pedashar, though. It costs them a lot, though. Three ultimates used to bring down the Doom, who did not have Doom. So, I don't know how I feel about that. Dyer's middle tower is okay, okay, it's pretty good. Fine, fine. RP. 
On to the Zeus here. They'll get the skewer back. Sayu trying to set up for the stun. Needs to get it off and will be able to do exactly that. And Toronto Tokyo is going to lose his life. Went for the D ward and instead got his head taken off. Dyer's top tower has been lost. I was going to say D headed. Then I remembered it's not D headed, it's B headed. Oh my goodness, it's not stopping, is it? Isle Spire Mike goes down to the bottom lane, it's collapsed, finds another kill. I mean, Yellow Submarine, you know, they're, they're just styling at this point. They are really are styling. They're using these low cooldowns, they're using their damage output to get a couple of these kills. I mean, yeah, Zeus goes down the mid lane, that was really nice for Team Empire, but with the Phantom Lancer and the Doom going down the past few minutes, although Gwenbeth's coming into so bad here. I think he's... Oh, 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 oh. oh thank you, zombie. Collapse comes through though. Doesn't have mana for lasso right now. He's gonna have to pop that stick to get it and now it does have Oh no! <laughs> Petashara. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. No gale can snuff the flames. Goodness gracious, dies to Witch Doctor, dies to Faceless Void, dies to Witch Doctor again. This isn't how you want to be playing your Doom. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It may yet stand. Now, hmm. someone, someone in the chat saying it's not Gwynbleard, it's uh, Gwynblade, which is interesting since uh, Gwynbleard is, is, is Welsh. Gwynblade, I, I guess Gwyn, Gwyn, Gwynblade would make sense as well. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, Magnus, his, his player name. Apparently it's Gwynblade, not Gwynblade. I was trying to give it the Welsh pronunciation, but apparently it's from The Witcher, so there goes that idea. <laughs> Haste. Haste rune on the mag once again, a rune he likes very much, and he's going to be heading down bottom very, very quickly to try and help out his uh, PL. Can he get in there in time to save him though? RP gets dropped, they are trying to bring him down, the doppelganger comes out from the Smiling Knight, he's still alive for the time being. Oh no, he throws him back, the skewer, it gets Smiling Knight killed. Oh my goodness, there's a traitor in our midst on the side of Team Empire, as the poor old PL was about to make it out, but unfortunately, Gwynblade made very sure of that not to happen. A slight mistake there, I believe. I, I don't know, is there, is there any excusing that one? Oh no, oh, poor little Doom. They didn't even chrono him. They didn't even chrono him. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was... You know who is Foreign Zero? <laughs> the Witch Doctor. That would be a tribute. Look at me. <laughs> I'm the carry now. He's having a rocking game on this Witch Doctor. Absolutely loving life. So Empire, when, when is the point where we're going to see them use these these ultimates? You know, so wait for RP, wait for Doom, and then just try and find a big five on five fight, which you can hopefully take the win in. Because still doesn't sound that good to me. Even I like a good Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. The Dyer yeah. have fortified their group. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. He has so much money. I got something to show. 
Jump in, lasso out onto Lena. They'll throw her up onto the cliff and leave her there to die. A very sad death for Sayu up here, but there is nothing she can do but to succumb to the flames. Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Yeah, true. Sounds very good. Oh, 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 Collapse trying to play around this little building here. Is they're going to cheat the tank? No, Collapse is good. He's just running to the tree line, got the blink away. Smiling Knight's not going to be able to find it. As they'll use that Thunder Gods just to give them that scouting information and see Petashara, Echnart, and Gwynblade coming up to the top lane. Pushka. Hey, it looks like he's uh, sticking his head a little bit too far here. Let's see if they can do anything about it on the Empire. Oh, just out of sight just in time. I can't now seize him, but it's too late. Yeah, it is. Regeneration. Yeah. Both teams kind of circling each other. Yeah, he's done. He's done. He's like, this is taking way too long. I know how this cookie crumbles. I'm getting myself out of attack. here. I don't think I've seen a Doom this poor in a very long time. Yeah. Laposhka. Oh no, he's found his best friend. He's found his best friend. Oh, Petashara, he's picked up the whole boulder to stop Laposhka solo killing him. <laughs> <laughs> Although Vinashara is still going to get pretty low from this, but he wants revenge. This is an angry team. Yeah, they've got the dust. I'll take down my Poshka. There you go, you cheeky little witch doctor. Get in the bin. Meanwhile, though, uh oh, this is not looking good, though, for the side of Team Empire. My Poshka, you know, this guy, he's so smart. He he was, hey, you know what? If I just go on this Doom in the top lane, they're so mad about me that they're going to respond, and that allows them to get the kill on the mag in the middle lane. Easy peasy. Yeah, always nice to see it, but uh, Team Empire, they're looking for some revenge here. They've got those ultimates up. They're going to smoke up onto the enemy side of the map. The first really aggressive play we've seen from this team as five. And they're going to open up onto Maposhka here. Smile Knight, he's just got this Diffusal Blade. Going to drop it onto Maposhka straight off the bat. They've got the dust to try and get the vision onto him now, but it's taking a long time to die. Will inevitably go down, but it's only going to be the singular kill. They're going to try and turn it into a tier one tower whilst they're at it. Radiant structures are fortified. They require time. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It may be top tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. No gale can oh, stop the radiant's top tower. Not a good trade at all for the side of Team Empire. They want to make something happen. They want to squeeze a sponge of these ultimates Dyer's here. Bottom but tower is that's under just not happening currently. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It may yet stand. There are definitely ways back into this game for Team Empire, but they need to really tighten their ship right now. Need some harsh captaining to come out. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh my goodness.
Yeah. Smoke up from the time of, side of Empire once again. They've got some vision with these wards. One of them gets dewarded, but they want to come around and try and play in this area of the map anyway. Toronto Tokyo is under the two on tower in the middle lane. Could be a potential pick if they can get the vision onto him. But right now, they will not. Phoenix, also a good option here. Sayu is going to get spotted. He has the yield to try and set up onto this Phoenix here, and they're going to drop the whole kitchen sink on the way of this Phoenix. I'll bring him down quickly. Nice little assassination onto Sobad. You know, not, 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 not the worst kill in the world. Still not a core like they would have wanted. Toronto Tokyo is coming forward and just casting a couple of spells onto Smiling Knight, trying to clear out a couple of his illusions. Yatoro, he wants to drop this Chrono down find himself a nice juicy couple of kills for his team but once again team empire they respect the chronosphere and they get themselves back chronosphere comes down onto the smiling knight where is the team where is the help it is just not coming in right now and they will bring him down regardless there's that death totem coming in once again the poshka claims another life yeah you drop that death ward and then the enemy carry just walks into it it's like <laughs> what is this a tickle and then he kills you Yeah, he's making it look OP. Yeah, it's like Witch Doctor and Disruptor, which they really like in CIS as a two supports, which you don't really see that much elsewhere. And they're going to use the Thunder Gods just to secure this for Shan. Make sure there's no funny business going on. Team Empire, they're heading into this pit right now. The Supernova's been dropped on Spider. Sp Handsome Lars is double ganging into this. He could be in some real trouble. He needs some help. And it's not really coming right now. Sunray's going to come through and he's just dead. Too much damage. And now Yatoro comes up onto that high ground looking for more. They're looking for a target. Sayu misses a stun. Collapses on top of him. He's got the double damage and he's got a flame break as well to try and get on top of Sayu. Bouncing him back all over the place. It's collapsed trying to close that gap. Does have the blink. Has a lasso. Dragging back Melina into the clutches of Yotaro as they'll bring down another hero. That is three dead for the side of Team Empire. Radiance Bottom Tower is fading fast. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Dyer's top yep, tower they are they are looking to surface. Mortality. The map is your oyster. Go and find your pearl, Yataro. Oh no, he gets caught out. A little bit too deep going on a bit of a warding mission here and Gwyn Blade will be able to finish the job. <laughs> Time is money. <laughs> Appreciate Dyer's bottom tower hopes for aid. Death tax. That ain't value, Chief. Okay, okay, okay. Bringing up some new meta here. I like that. Toronto Tokyo testing the waters a little bit. Once again, popping that Thunder Gods, trying to get them some vision. Smiling Knight maybe in some trouble. Yatoro comes down, closing that gap, trying to bring down the Smiling Knight here, but the heals come through Yatoro. Maybe overstepping his mark a little bit here. He doesn't actually have the mana for the Chronosphere, and now the RP comes down, but the Phoenix has us up an A on disc, enables him to get off the egg, but it doesn't make a difference. Still gonna die. Yatoro in some trouble as well as the Doom falls on the high ground. Toronto Tokyo now coming into this one. Smiling Knight needs to leave, but the Zeus is getting the blink across onto the high ground and gets a kill onto Smiling 
night. Petashiro dead as well as Dekanal goes down. Yutoro looking for the plus one to get the lasso out onto the Magnus here. And Yutoro is closing that gap. He gets another one. He's got a Chrono through if they really want to bring down Sayu the hard way. Are they going to use it? Nah, it's just a leader. They're just going to chase her the old fashioned way. Give her a good old clobbering under the tier fours. Are they stopping? Oh, they are not. Toronto Tokyo gets himself the ultra killers. Everyone on the side of Team Empire has fallen. What looked like a pretty bad fight for the side of Yellow Submarine just still goes their way. This team just can't seem to lose fights anymore. Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top <laughs> tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Bugs for you. Let, 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 let me have a look. Let me give it the old uh, Oxford try as uh, down goes Petashara once again. Not really big news at this point. 25% uh, spell amplification. Yeah, his ulti is currently doing 640 damage. No gale can snuff the flame. To everyone on the enemy team. <laughs> Seems good, man. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Dyer's they top tower is do under not. attack. 28 minutes in. Uh, Gwynblade, he's got the blink away though, just in time before that first tick of damage comes through. Collapse, meanwhile, he's being jumped on by the Smiling Man. I think Smiling Man kind of wants to leave, but they get the Chrono Spear down onto PL once again. And with that BKB, there's nothing they can do about it. Gwynblade is just kind of watching as that PL falls again. No buyback on that Phantom Lancer either, so nothing they can do to try and turn this one around. And they're just going to lose two heroes. That's going to be it. I mean, it is a Chronosphere and a Supernova used. They don't have that Aegis anymore, so there could be a potential Dyer's for Team Empire to try and make attack. a play when that Phantom Lancer is back. I'd like to see one last try from them. They have these ultimates available. Could be a real Dyer's opportunity. Middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's middle tower has been uprooted. Yeah, being controlled up pretty well, and Pelashara pops a BKB to keep himself alive, realizing that they are going to need him if they want to try and make any kind of play there until kill off Phoenix in the backlands. Poshka looking on over. Nothing he can do about that, though. And now, well, Thunder God's Wrath comes down from the Zeus just to give them a little bit of information. And also, it is just doing a crazy amount of damage, so it's really not a bad idea to just keep on spamming it every time it's off cooldown, which seems to be what Toronto Tokyo is doing right now. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Petashara. Oh no, blinks no into Yatoro. Oh my goodness, Petashara. I, I think he was TPing Tox. He didn't think the enemies were there and he thought he could get himself a couple of bounties. Unfortunately, he met a very swift demise instead. Radiance Middle Tower is losing its foundation. Yeah, we'll settle for that. Heads up! Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Terrifying. Yeah, strange build from the Zeus Dyer's again here. You know, this isn't something we're used to seeing. Not going for the Ags and instead going for Aether Yashikaya into this Hex with the Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger, I totally understand. I really like Blink Zeus, actually. Um, used to like Four Star Zeus when Four Star was good, unfortunately. It's just a little bit poop now. Yeah, the Hero does benefit a lot. Exactly. He benefits from mobility, which he doesn't actually have.
Then again, he's also got a ton of movement speed with this uh, Yashikai build as, uh, oh yes. man. They're His favorite spot, Collapse, throws and dying up that cliff once again. And uh, comes the Thunder Gods here to give him some vision. The Chronosphere comes down onto the PL once again. He's just gonna straight up die every single fight. PL walks into a Chrono, gets killed off, and that's it. Like, that, that's literally it. Feels like it. Oh my god, the range on that Hex. Catching out Sayu here. Sayu's just gonna straight up die here. He has got that yield to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Gwimbliad coming in. Not a bad RP, but where is the damage to finish it off? Well, they've got a little bit here. They're throwing the whole kitchen sink away, weird. but they can't even bring down Maposhka. They can't even bring down the position five support. And it is gonna be a stern execution from the side of Yellow Submarine as Team Empire are wiped off the face of the map. My goodness, what a clean game from Yellow Submarine. I mean, everybody just doing their job and a little bit more. Everybody pulling through here on this team and, uh, you know, bringing this...
to put on as well because you know it's like a, quite a complicated headset it's got lots of little bits it's got to go over the hat it's a bit of an operation guys you know the lengths i go to for you guys is uh you know underappreciated i would say you have 10 seconds left thank you sir i missed the tip but thank you sir <laughs> you have five seconds left radiant team pick Dire yeah, yeah, I mean, I have another one. I, I have like a lot of fancy dress stuff. I mean, throughout my, my time in like university and even before university, and I mean, me and my friends have always been big on like, yeah, going out dressed as idiots and getting slammed. But anyway, uh, we have an IO Ledge Shark coming out from uh, Team Empire, uh, Yellow Submarine. Meanwhile, uh, have a Phoenix. Do you want me to get my other cowboy hat? I can show it to you if you want it. I can send it across, although I'm not sure what shipping to the Philippines left. is going to be like. That sounds expensive. All right, all right. No worries. Probably cost me more than the hat. Yeah. <laughs> Radiant Team Ban Invoker. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I really like the new Lash Track as well. I think he's, uh, well, not new Lash Track. You know, he's been this way for a very long time. Nothing's new anymore. We're stuck in this fight. But the fact that he's being played now, uh, the way he's being played is really enjoyable, actually. It's, it's, it's fun to watch. And of course, the stacking meta favors him a lot. Any hero which can take stacks is good. That's, that's essentially what you need to know about mid laners right now. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant Team Ban. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. Yeah. Yeah, it's very very scary to play into toronto tokyo and Volker. this guy can uh, throw down some serious moves on this hero it's also pretty good um as a yeah, idea into io as well just because you know the two heroes usually together makes it nice and easy for the tornadoes and yeah i mean lots of nice little things they go for the spin on yellow submarine straight away okay right gotcha you have 10 seconds left You have five seconds left. Sure, sure. So, what, what, when you see a spin, what do you think about as terms of answers to this hero? Omni Knight. You have 
10 seconds left. Okay. You have five seconds left. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very worried once more for Team Empire. <laughs> I really don't want to be that guy who just slates him down two games in a row, but I feel like the Omni Knight and Sven combination is just so dirty to play into, and you know, Yellow Submarine, you know they love playing to their timings, and that is this this is looking like a hella strong timing. You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Dire team ban. Yeah, I'm quite liking this Tide pick. It, it does kind of give Team Empire some options. You know, more look at this, more uh, maybe I'm, I'm over exaggerating on Yellow Submarine. The thing is, we've seen this Sven and Omni Knight just absolutely roll people before, so left. that does make me concerned, but I'm trying to ignore my previous biases, get over that, and just kind of focus on what Team Empire have to offer. Maybe if this PA has a really nice lane, she can get a really decent timing on the man. Battle Fury and start to really kind of farm up, pull ahead somehow doesn't get too pressured by the side of your submarine what damage they have to deal to this pa right now as well if she does pull ahead with that evasion the sven's gonna feel not that strong against her the invoker's gonna be going cross work so. you have 10 seconds left you have five seconds left Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Dire team bad. Radiant team pick. Yeah. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. I feel like I'm in a real university, but at I've been in the retail sector for Winter almost three years. Wyvern. It does. Yeah, it's mental. Ooh. You have 10 seconds left. You have five seconds left. I feel like I'm in a... Yeah, it does. It does. With the heavenly grace on him. Yeah, it's not going to be lasting too long. So... I think the idea here, though, is to kind of expect the Sven not to go for BKB, maybe, and try and grab him so that he just kills his Omni Knight or something like this. You know, kills his Phoenix, kills his Omni. I, th I think that's got to be the play from Team Empire. Yeah, and you don't want to just be Leshrac food. <laughs> Yeah. What you choose your hero.
They do indeed, yeah. They do indeed. A lot of pressure to come out from this uh, yellow submarine side. It is really going to be kind of the unstoppable force versus the brick wall of Team Empire. Who's going to win out? Well, I'm not too sure on this one. I, I, I think this is... I really actually like this Wyvern pick. And I like this Tide pick as well. So I think Team Empire have been able to recover their draft from these parts to the last two picks. Is it enough? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I guess we'll find out. Um, you know, where, where would you put, place this one uh, percentagely wise, Theban? I think that's fair. You have 10 seconds left. Yeah, it's going to be scary. Alrighty, let's see what they can do. And of course, guys, if you think you know who has the better draft, if you think you know who's going to win, then uh, you can go and have a check out some odds over on egb.com. That is egbet, who are the official betting sponsors for the epic league and all their information is down below the stream in one of those lovely lovely banners so uh check that out if you are a betting person and uh, fancy putting some money down on this game but for us we are thinking that yellow submarine are going to make this into a clean tour i have no reason to doubt toronto tokyo i did so yesterday and i regretted it muchly um and yeah i mean lost the wager there and ended up having to make a donation uh in in our, in our names after that uh horrendous beatdown which uh, Yellow Submarine's game yesterday so I, I know not to bet against them again here I'm a sensible man and Toronto Tokyo to poker is, is really a treat to watch I'm excited to get to see it in action once again hopefully we see a similar performance as we saw last time certainly is yeah i mean he doesn't have the io to teleport him around the map like we saw last time he was playing this hero but either way i don't think that's gonna make much of a difference to his play style might not quite be as impressive but still looking forward to it nonetheless so let's have a look at some of these lanes it's gonna be the evoker mid versus the left rack i think we've already talked about that a little bit just saying how it's in the laning phase the left rack's probably gonna be okay it's when you start getting the emp and the cold snap combination to where the lash is going to start to have troubles with the invoker but that's not until like the early mid at the very earliest meanwhile up at top we've got yatoro on the sven with um maposhka on the omni knight they're going to be laning into Petashara and on to uh say i wonder who's going to go top yeah it's going to be Ekana, isn't it the i will lane with the uh, pa so who no oh okay okay True. You are a true friend. You I should did I mix my magics? Fight me. Beautiful. Yeah. Alrighty, and down to the bottom lane, we're going to have the, uh, we have some problems with, uh, Team Empire. Hold on, I'm just going to talk to my produ producer. What's going on? Give, give, give it to me in my ear. Uh-huh. 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 Okay, well, guys, we have the inside scoop. Um, there's some electrical issues with Team Empire right now. They have no idea how long it's going to be. So, uh, you know what, David? Let's use the opportunity to uh, talk about the most recent update um, from the dev team with Dota 2. So, uh, there are a couple of interesting uh, tidbits in there. 
firstly the dpc season is going to be starting back up uh sometime soon in uh, in mid-january in fact i believe they've said so uh, that's quite exciting gonna have uh, dpc back on the run well, what do you think that means for a lot of these teams <laughs> well, uh, the 2021 Dota Pro Circuit will start on January the 18th with 16 teams competing in two divisions um, within six regional leagues. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's going to also mean we've got a major um, at the start of the season at some point, with, which is what the qualification will be from that. Um, what do you think that means for the teams? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a rough time to be a Dota Rog, but uh, thankfully the horizon is in sight. The Dark Knight is finally coming to an end. Um, also, the original plan to uh, release a new hero in the new patch on November 30th has been delayed. They said uh, she needs a bit more time to cozy up for the winter, so uh, fe female hero is going to be on the cards. That's about all we know so far. Uh, I I'm fairly sure some of the lore experts have got a good idea on who it is. I can't remember exactly what the dealio is, but uh, are you excited for a new hero? What, what do you what do you hope the new hero is going to be? Yeah. <laughs> Terrorblade or Monkey King? Yeah, yeah, I guess Monkey King was our way after TB. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> it feels like, I mean, okay, so Monkey King is barely a carry hero, right? Like, he's bounced around from, like, carry to mid. He's not, like, a hard carry. When was the last hard carry we had? Exactly. I just I just want a nice Yeah, I just want a nice creep hitter. That's what I want. Hope so. I'm I'm hope I'm I'd either have a five or a or a one, because I feel like those are the neglected roles. Let's have I mean have a, let's have a think of what the previous ones have been. We've had uh we've had Snapfire and Void Spirit last time. That's like a four position slash mid position. Yeah. No, no, no. One's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Phoenix, right? Took a long time. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably. Especially Io, like, you know, strength implies, you know, muscle. There's nothing muscly about Io. That, that, that is one meek ball of light. Liter literally ethereal. Literally no flesh, never mind muscle. How can you be strong if you have no muscle? Maybe that's extremely, <laughs> it's extremely limited view of mine. But uh, yeah, before that, we have Pango and Willow. Again, uh, four position and a three position. So um, the offlaners got their, uh, got their Pangolier boy, who has also been played a little bit in mid and four. Uh, Willow almost exclusively position four. And then before that, what do we have? Well, now we're really stretching our memories. What do we have before? Or a pulse five. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to get like a really high skill pulse five though, because we don't really have many, 
you know, I think Chen is the only kind of really high skill POS 5 hero we have when you come to like, you know, I'm talking about mechanical, like micro and stuff like that. Void Spirit felt very appealing to a lot of people for, for that reason. What's up? <laughs> Oops. Oops. How many daggers am I holding up? You look stunned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean, like... Um, I actually played Chen about a couple of months ago for the first time in a very long time. Um, so... I got into an unranked game with my five stack and I was like, hey, I uh, do this thing where I'm just like, I'm just going to random a hero and whatever it is, I'm going to play it mid. And I got Chen. I, I think I went Helm of the Dominator into AC was my build or something like that. And then just tried to like destroy people with uh, penitence. I mean, we lost, but my, I, I did pretty well. I did OK. Oh, yeah, I think it was Helm of the Dominator, Mask of Madness, AC. It was pretty it was pretty sick. <laughs> Damn, what an oracle. Say again, I did I didn't do that badly, but um yeah, no, not not my hero, that's for sure. Not 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 my strong suit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, I, I was always scared of Naga Siren, and then there was a patch where she was really strong, and I was like, oh, I'll give her a little bit of a go. And, I mean, my coin with our hero is pretty easy. I mean, the thing about Naga is that she's very low punishing, because you don't have to be in lane. You just send your illusions to lane, and it's fine. So, yeah, I'd like to see Naga buffs in the new patch, that's for sure. I like Naga. Um, Just electrical issues. Gotta get the electrician out, you know? Restart the old, uh, the old generator, whatever it may be. <laughs> no, no, that I, I'm nowhere near professional nor prepared enough to uh, have the pause rules by my side. But maybe our, our very kind uh, admin will um, sort us out on that one. And they are giving us some information though, which is very useful. Uh, they, they've said that the rumor is that the new character's name is going to be called Valkyrie. And she had a crossbow. That's what that's what we know so far. That's what we've pieced together. Sounds like a carry. Oh, get me in. Get me in. I'm I'm ready. I love uh, I, lo I love sniper. I really do. I'm so sad that he's not meta right now. Whoa. Whoa. Be careful, Beaven. Your your career's on the line here. Tread carefully, um, is all I'm saying. Long may you be oh, saved by the bell, saved by the Anyway, game's back on, guys. Don't listen to that guy. Um, let's get back into the game. Uh, we're back. The electricity's been restarted. Defibrillator's been used, or whatever you use. I don't know. I'm not an electrician, but we're back into the game. That's what I do know. I am a Dota Stition. And we are getting back into it. Alrighty, so let's refresh ourselves on what's going on here. We've got Toronto Tokyo playing the Invoker in the middle lane. Gonna go Quaswex into this left track and attempt to stop him being super effective and run around the map doing exactly what he wants. Meanwhile, in the safe lane, we've got the PA comboing it up with what we imagine to be the Winter Wire then later on. She's gonna TP down here. She's gonna be playing into the Centaur War Runner and the Phoenix are gonna be trying to make her life as difficult as possible and may well be successful in doing so. I, I think so. It looks like a pretty good lane versus the PA. We'll see what they're able to do. Meanwhile, up at the top, we've got Petashara on the... Tim... Wait, what am I saying? No, it's, that's a Tidehunter. Uh, playing with the Io up here in the top lane. The big old watermelon and the little ball of light playing into the Sven and Omni Knight combination. Will they be able to stop this Sven farming? Seems pretty unlikely.
get it out of here. Meanwhile, at mid, Toronto, Tokyo getting a little bit of an advantage with a 2 CS lead. Uh, very, very close between the two of them here, though no real advantage in the mid lane either. So uh, it's, it's all pretty chill. Sven's probably the only one who's actually struggling um, somewhat in lane, but everyone's doing okay. Oh, yes, he does. Hello? Toronto, Tokyo with the tornado. With the deny, not bad. So bad coming in from behind as well. They're trying to get the damage out onto Gwembliad with this cold snap and burning combination, but it's not enough to bring him down. Not with Styro there, healing him up. So uh, Gwenblade is going to be absolutely hunky dory, untouched, and all as well. But didn't get the rune though. So, yeah. Radiance Courier has been slain. Such an outrage. No. Normally, normally. Oh, naughty boy. Yep. Yeah, double value on the ward. Very nice. Definitely what we want to be seeing. As another EMP catches out Gwynblade, Toronto Tokyo being very, very annoying with this harassment and with the EMPs in the mid lane. Bottom lane once again, just harassing collapse here. Carrying him with these arctic burns, but he doesn't really care. Dire the guy's so tanky at this point. He's got a ring of health, he's got a bracer, he's got a ring of regen, he's got a magic stick. So good luck bringing him down. You're gonna struggle. Sai so making yet another stack here. Meanwhile, Gwynblade once again getting sat on by Toronto Tokyo, but he's trying to run him down here, popping both the spells, but unfortunately he's run out of mana very quickly and was so bad rotating in. And Sai is going to have to come across and help him out. Does he have the heals? Yes, he does. Keeping Gwynblade alive very, very nicely, and Gwynblade is going to get himself out. It was a double rotation in from both of the supports, but the same thing was done by Yellow Submarine, so not so bad in the end. Yeah, I could have, could have seen it happening, but yeah, apparently not going to go in for that one, even though he has low health and no Omni Knight around. They will take the greedy players and go for that stack instead. I mean, I guess maybe flashbacks to last game when they got all those stacks stolen. It was very miserable, so I don't want that to be happening again. A wyvern's breath. Thanks, Dyer's man. middle tower is learning to fear.
Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Radiant Team Ban. Yes. God, your, your voice Dire is so much deeper with this mic. Bellowing. <laughs> mm. Hello. <laughs> uh, not to you again. Dire team pick. How dare story. you have a speech impediment? Welcome back everyone, here we are, Live to Win taking on Namiga Gaming as Epically continues. Our first series of the day was a pretty short-lived one, quick and easy there for you Yellow Submarine. And I'm joined by T again to take us through the draft as we kick off game one in this best of three. How are you doing on this freezing cold European afternoon? <laughs> Good. Oh snap, we got an AA, mate. Look at that. Look at that, yeah. I've been Aye. wondering where this guy is. Yeah, we were seeing Omnis, we we're seeing Ios, Winter Wyverns, all these heals. It's uh it kind of makes sense to see a bit of AA and he's paired up with a void. That age-old oh. combo of ice blast into chrono. You really can't muck that one up, can you? I think some you players could find a way. Oh. <laughs> Alright, please do tell. You have five uh, seconds oh. left. You know, if you get stunned. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you release the, you know, the tracer or the trap, whatever you want to call it, the first projectile, and then you get stunned, and it just keeps on flying, and then you can't, you can't let it go. Dire team ban. Wow. So then when you have like, you know, Phoenix does that thing where he sunrays off the cliff to TP and he just keeps sun, if he just keeps sunraying and he goes to the, like, he goes from bot lane to top lane. That would be you sick. Have 10 seconds left. Let's do it. You have five seconds left. That's what's Radio coming in the new patch, guys. Man. We're moving from flat earth Dota 2 to the global system. Uh, the round, round earth. Wait, so so when Luna uses ulti, the moon comes up and you it pulls the tides and it changes where the tide's moving? Mmm. You have five oh, seconds wait, left. Did, did oh. you used to play Dota 1? Or are you a Dota 2 boy? So in Dota 1 there was a period where the rivers had puddles. Like the, the, the river had like sections of water which only Morphling and Tidehunter could swim you through. Have Ten seconds left. Like, they, they would actually swim through it, yeah. It was pretty hype. That's actually amazing, oh left. god. Alright. You wanna no, talk about the draft? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same, I just tabbed back into the draft, mate. Heroes have been picked. Oh, not Again, not, no real developments here. I think we've already touched on it, it's like with the AA pick. It's an interesting adaptation Dire to the, to the IO. Um, it's interesting how well it's going to play into IO Slaughter. I feel realistically, as a five, you're not really going to do that much against these heroes. You have mm. that extra move speed to disconnect from the cold feet. It will be annoying the chilling touch, but naturally, when AA was good, it's because he was able to bruise down off lane. So when he's being paired into an left. IO plus one, I think uh, you're going to completely you remove AA as a hero because he doesn't have that chip potential. He doesn't really have kill for it, so it's good for the game. But I don't see it being a good solution for exiting any phase. I'd love to see them have a position four that Radio can at least rotate in and maybe apply some pressure. Good. But double save from Namiga. Oh, wow. This is, yeah. There's uh, the fact that AA is also like not laning with a Sven, right? He's with a Void. So you don't even have the like Cold Feet Storm Hammer or anything like that. It, void, Void bashes magic damage though, right? So you're going to have at you least have something there with, uh, left. with Ice Vortex. Yeah, I know I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find seconds. extra little bits of, bits of fun there for the AA. I picked my Void, but I have no Accelerant. But I do have Vortex. Mm. I don't have Solar Crest or Empower or Bloodlust. I have the Vortex. I'd actually love to see what is the... What actually would be the numbers? 
Not enough. Yeah, you can, you can look it up. Like this, this group stage for Epic League, you know, we're getting towards the end now. Namiga are down at the bottom and up against Live to win one of the one of the better teams. They're in third place right now, four and one. Namiga two and four. If Namiga lose out here, it looks like they're pretty much done for. Well, Live to win are really aiming for, you know, kind of top two spot at this, uh, this point in time. So uh, a must win for Namiga and it should be a, a solid series here for Live to win. I love it when we get to end a group stage and we've got these, you know, these series where it's kind of do or die, Dying looking for top spot or bottom spot, Tusk. trying to figure out what the different uh, difference is. Tusk, hello. We're going for a snow theme. It is cold today. Radiant team, pick. I like well, nothing wrong with it. Right? Just a. Uh... Yeah, when I mentioned the idea of rotating, it does play into that. I think. Live to win out, might fall victim to when they join the fight, they're kind of committed, and with double save, they're not really that explosive, right? Like, if the Oracle's well positioned, you commit to get the AA, you don't have enough have instant damage right now, left. so it's great for laning phase pressure, but I'd like to see them Strong get some more, okay, some more jump, sure. It allows you to locate what? the Oracle. Yeah, true, or the IO. Do you know what the interactions are between Ice Blast and False Promise? It's it stops the healing, right? Yes, it stops the healing, left. but you can still like survive. Oh, you have five that, seconds think. left. Mm -hmm. Dire team ban. Yeah, because. You have 10 Fate seconds edict left. and yeah. No. You have five seconds left. But it, it should offer you at least some protection against it. Very likely why the Oracle comes out, yeah. Don't hit the threshold. Your W on Oracle. Certainly well enough with that spell name. My Fate God. Edict. There we go, Fate Edict. Like you can just buy time. And then you can... My concern though for Live to Win, they have really good like laning pressure simply because of AA plus Tusk if they play the same lane. But outside of that, they're kind of static in their damage and kind of non existent. So yeah, it's a lot of pressure on this support Joe entering the game strongly. A Pango there for Namiga. Should be in what position two up against the storm. Dire it's going to give them a decent team amount of team fight and the ability to get on top of the void. Still going to struggle here. It feels like to uh, to get out of team fights once you're in. You know, trying to blow someone up. The storm Ancrad in the void. Ankrad is renowned in this division two for his pangolier. It's what got them, you know, even you just to get into division two. Left. Yeah, so excited to see him get to play this hero again. And it, it, it boils down to the fact left. that Namiga, their lanes are strong if the Tusk doesn't rotate into the AA lane. The Ice Ladder will have a good time. The Pango in mid should be pretty good. And it allows for this kind of overwhelming presence in this early fight. What Namiga need right now is a way to actually close out the game. What is their win condition? Do they have the Terror Blade? Do they have a troll? The one of these bigger heroes you that can win even like a Morphling, for example, the unkillable hero. I don't, I don't see Lift to Win with any left. damage right now. But see, they got one pick on Lift to Win. They're looking for it off lane. It's going to be. I, I guess it could still be Pos three Tusk. Yeah, like you mentioned the roaming potential of the Tusk, but we have seen him shift a little bit into the off lane. They've got an option there to maybe shift back into Pos four if they want to. I don't know if you can see my response to, to that, think but about it, that was just a Is it just nah? Nah, it was a nah, yeah. That was a... Mate, if they pause free task, I'll... I... Eat something? <laughs> You'll drink coffee instead of tea? Yeah, I was looking around my desk if there's something I could consume, <laughs> but there's really not... I'll have some dark raspberry chocolate, which is more just me mm. treating myself, if anything. <laughs> not really a punishment at this point. Well, you can treat yourself if you're correct. If this yeah, is yeah, a... Man. Position four tusk. Have a, have a bit of chalky, mate. What, what an easy treat. Silence oh, look at that. Oh, wow. I'm going to treat myself. Wait, well, hold up. Offline yeah, silencer? Yeah, it's offline yeah. silencer. The old A. 
uh, offlane silencer. Very nice of him to rename yes. it to Old Abe because I could never pronounce his actual name. Is it Afaninja? Wasn't the afterlife? You have ten seconds After left. Is it afterlife? You have five seconds left. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> You can't pronounce afterlife, mate. You're having some struggles there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, where, 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 uh, but good question. Where has Afeninja gone? Because he was, what, mid lane of Hellraisers like four years ago. <laughs> I have not seen him in a while. Teamless. Yeah. Disappeared. Afterlife, easy to pronounce name, guys. Just in case you uh, didn't know how to pronounce it, silly Billy's um, playing offlane silencer. What what do you pick carry wise into that? Like what what's left? Do you, do you have buys, Juggernaut or something? Hero that buys Manta because you're playing up against mm. Global and Orchid. So for example, I think Lifesteal is too uh, like is Lifesteal too greedy because it's great with Slada, but I feel. Poking your head up to high ground, it simplifies the engagement. Okay, they go troll. Nice. All right, yeah, but that's actually really good. Troll happily can buy Manto if he wants. He can, he can buy the Abyssal. Like, literally every item Troll wants to buy allows him to like have a timing in this game to play into what Live to Win one fight with. So actually, it's a really good pick. And it's Oracle Troll as well. You've got like 13 seconds of invulnerability or something, like something insane like that between False Promise and Battle Trance to survive through, you know, Ice Blast, Chrono, whatever else that Live to Win throw to you. And of course, you know, drafts all done. You can check out the odds by clicking the EGB banner below if you want to gamble responsibly, everybody. What are your final words on the draft then, T? I'm I'm really excited to see what this Pango gets up to. You said he's a you know, pretty popular hero for Ironcrad here. What what kind of itemization do you reckon he's going to head into? Like, do you still consider Greaves even if you're against AA? Yeah. So that, that's, I guess that's what I was angling towards with that question. You know, do you want to go Greaves against AA? And I, yeah, if you say yes, then sure thing. We'll see if he goes that direction. We get ourselves. Just as I envisaged. You can't buy heal. Oh, wow. Hello. Walk up the staircase. Quick little tag team on the IO. Oh, dear. He's going to... Oh, he's going to get away. Oh, no. Quickly tethers to the Oracle. All right. Here's a quick question. How do I remove the bug, which is player perspective in a lobby? Do I have to, like, disconnect from the lobby? Watch your game? Yeah. I okay, don't I'm... know. Well, I'm just going to... I, th I, I think you... At the very least, you have to restart your game. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the way to get around it, yeah. Well, we... Oh no. But you know, the best part about that bug is when you're in the draft screen and you can see like where, if you've got pink or, you know, if you've got the drafter's oh, perspective cool. selected, you can see where their curse is going to what heroes they're actually thinking about. Yeah, it's, that, it's actually a little, a little bit of fun that you can have with that bug. <laughs> a bit of sneakiness. Three bounty runes there for an Amiga. Good start. And Troll realizing, you know, three, four heroes were showing down bottom lane, so he sneaks in. He's able to grab one of the northern ones. As Immersion. 
And after life, your Tuscan silence atop against Oracle Troll. Mid lane, it is the Pango against Storm. And down bottom, Io Slada versus Ancient Apparition and Faceless Void. And we know how strong this Io Slada lane can be, especially in bullying. Already with an early crush, Seneco's down to half HP. He's going to have to burn through a lot of regen, which he doesn't have much of. One tango he had already expended. Void's got a set of tangos here, so they're going to really spend a lot to keep themselves just sitting in lane. Hmm. Oh, my game's crashed. Oh, no, it hasn't. Let's get hit. No, my game's crashed. <laughs> Oh, did, oh, maybe it was just my PC. Yeah, I think Dota 2 just, uh, just lagged my PC. Oh god, what have we done? <laughs> We've given T control. I don't know, I just open my mouth and words come out. Calm down. <laughs> oh no. That's going to give Tusk level 2 as well, right? Now Emergent's got the option of Snowball or Shards, but he's gone a little far forward here. Slowed down by the axes, a lot of damage incoming, but no more mana remaining here for the Oracle. So, like Tusk will back himself up, Salve and the Purifying Flame is going to help heal him back up towards full. He's got a stack small camp though, so he'll now eventually get to pull off and drag that wave back to his tier one. But it's like, look, look, look. Yeah, just look at like Troll's positioning. Uh, look at where he's standing. He's like, do I go near this creep wave? Do I try and sneak last hits here? Because it's so scary, you know, the, the fact you were mentioning that Tusk and this Sansa can actually gap close, get on him, do a lot of damage. Like now, shards with tag team. They pump the damage forward. The axes come though, and Troll with Oracle, they turn on to Afterlife. Pops his wand. Doesn't look like they'll finish off the troll and a good little trade there back and forth, but they know that that salve trade is going to be good for them regardless. Oracle. Oh, he's fine. Well, so you do a, a full... Oh, is Silence going to die here? Troll slowed him down enough. He's dead. No, Fairy Fire. Oh, one more hit. Troll is trying to get there. He's so far away. The final touch will get him first blood. And Troll secures it. Immersion couldn't do anything about it. My gratitude. Nice. Like a, a full a full lane wave of creeps that gets pulled in as well. Like not just like a half pull or something. Nice. Oh, Seneco. Io picks him off. It's Io Slada lane. They're putting so much pressure on bottom. Yeah, like Void. Mm. He can time walk off a lot of that harassment. And he's got Morbid Mask now, so 
at least a little bit of self-sustain for the Faceless Void. Look, they're facing off against each other. The Bash is in the cold feet, but he's got an IO behind him. He's still got Fairy Fire here for IO. It looks like the Chosen One with Treads Bracer. Super tanky with a lot of attack speed and level two bash. You can't really stand your ground as dream. Speed. Mid lane, FN's gonna get popped. Immersion did TP to rotate and try and help him, but that's just a straight up 1v1 kill. Pango's still full HP. Level three shield crash, tasty stuff. And Amiga with a great start to the laning stage. Three nil, 1000 net worth advantage over live to win. <laughs> Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Jeez, imagine. Imagine if Dota 2 was like that. I could look at you all day. Who would you like to have a coach in your dressing room? Like, who, who do you think would be giving you that morale boost or the ability to, you know, shift the dynamic of a game at halftime? Hmm. Yeah, attempt on the troll, but he's going to walk back half HP. But it's, it's funny you say that because our oh, storm is going in, but oh, cancels the rolling thunder. Does he have enough damage? One more touch. FN's got it. Gets revenge on the Pangolier. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. But yeah, it's, it's funny you say that about having someone outside of Dota 2 come into the coaching room. Because I know in Korea, a lot of the like football and uh, baseball teams and stuff like that, they had, um, this was like five, six years ago, but they had some like StarCraft players go into the, go into the changing rooms to like boost the morale of the players. Yeah. Like StarCraft, because the StarCraft players were more famous than the football players were. <laughs> Mentality. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. It will fall like a ripe apple. No bot. That's just a defensive one, really. Dream felt threatened there by the IO, but they've got storm rotation in. Eight and a half minutes here, and I've got FN jumping on the slaughter for a quick and easy kill. So, more than just a defensive chrono, saves Dream's life and gets them the bonus kill on that Slardar, which has been applying a lot of pressure in that bot lane. But take a look at the Pango. He's here with an arcane rune ready with that rolling thunder and a javelin. He's going to output a lot of damage if he can find a target. But I don't think Dream's the one he wants to go for. I don't know if we caught it top as well, but a nice little play by Immersion just a shards away from Oracle and Troll, who were both converging on him. Phase Boots Troll, pretty speedy, but Afterlife just sticking around in lane while, like you said, it, Immersion's here just tanking up spells, making sure that this Silencer can keep leveling up, leveling up, getting some gold. Fight. Radiance Bottom Tower is fading fast. <laughs> Radiance bottom tower is under attack. There is little it can do. And Amiga contesting runes. They're about to spawn. Rolling Thunder gets fake pumped down. They're chasing Suneko. He is a freebie. Down goes the ancient oppression, but Sansa dodges away from the Pangolier. It looks like Ankrad off with an arcane rune. Dream. Time walks back to the high ground after grabbing a bounty rune. 
Washbuckle there, just tickling away as a relocate. Yeah, bringing Slaughter in. They want to continue this fight. I wasn't sure what was the plan, because Immersion, he's a plus four, and he relocated in on him, but the shards block again. He outplays them. Old Afterlife there with a good old chuckle as the Tusk does maneuver himself and weasel out of danger. Radiant's bark has grown thick. Oh, Storm mid. Killing spree. Easy pickings. Poor Oracle. Oh, he's just trying to leech level. Like, he's so close to level 6. Look at him, T. 13 experience away. Tower is fading fast. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. There is little it can do. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, they get the slot on. They've got the global to cover him as well. That's that's one of the great things here, having global to cover heroes like Storm. We've seen it in the past with you know Meepo as a as a big one as well. These hard initiating heroes that once they commit, they need to get that kill, and they are a little bit squishy. And that's Afterlife's job. He's going on the void. Oh, look at the weird bounces and crashes. He's going to get him actually. Dream is just chain stunned there. That was bizarre. Bouncing off that wall. What's the... What's the line? Say the line. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower hopes for aid. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Thank you. It's also the fact... Thank you, thank you. Also the fact that Pango saw the smoke. He knew that Seneco was smoked with someone to try and find a kill. So expecting the Faceless Void as they do get the Chrono. And now Seneco 6, so they've got the burst damage. There we go. Dream and Seneco, they do get revenge. Immersion's here as well, just a bit of hello. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Beep, beep. It may Beep, beep, I'm a Jeep. The trees whisper of a strategy. <laughs> the sound of a horn doesn't indicate the size of a car. Okay, T Governor. What what what, what would you prefer? Do you, want, do you want to be a truck? <laughs> Get me out! <laughs> oh dear. Oh. This is what happens when you put two Brits together. We just go mental. <laughs> We've lost it. Jump in, hello Tusk. He's being initiated on Namiga. Like a nice rolling thunder with a shield crash over the cliff top. And that is a nice sort of pick off on immersion. Try and turn this into a tier one. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. It will fall like a ripe apple. Oh, Dream. Do they get the nets? They ensnare him up. He's got time walk now, and they ice blast the troll. Oh, dear. This troll's in trouble. Don't relocate him out in time, as it barely gets the IO out of there as well. My eternal Immersion again. Keeps tanking these ganks. He was looking for bounty runes, but three Namiga heroes surround him. And that bounty rune belongs to them. He's even drawing on the map saying this is ours. Way 
He has jumped in, but they've got a nice blast landing in onto the IO. Oracle's behind with a false promise red. But the global sun's gonna stop any of the saves coming. Dream's time walked away though, trying to get out of their defensive maneuver. A storm will also zip back to the high ground, and they do get in and out. But without losing anyone, no casualties there from live to win. We can't execute. Dyer's top tower is feeling its mortality. Radiant's bottom tower is fading fast. Dyer's top tower is under attack. The Radiant have called upon their defenses. Yeah, nice little shifts there. And then Oracle, he's, uh, he's not going to get many items, is he? He's just got boots, raindrops, buying little bits and bobs all over the place. And the chosen one gets shredded. Three heroes from Live to Win to come down with a chrono and this uh, like you're saying the, the fn storm is all over the place you know he's rotating bot up to top he's not just afk farming jungle he is very heavily involved and active as he also finds the troll don't think they can kill him off though fn is thinking about it and dar observable well, they're going to give them the the vision and cover that area as both oracle and iotp down the double saves arrive dyer's top tower is under attack yeah there's the beep beep with his blink dagger they do connect twice with that Rolling Thunder, but Storm Spirit Dyer's just zips out of there. Hopes for aid. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. It will be a ruin long studied. Let the fun begin. It's difficult. Yeah, this Slardar is up top lane trying to clear out the wave that you know, old old. A has sat top for 18 minutes of this game, right? He is just pushing that wave. He's bought a Glimmer Cape. He's actually moving into, into Aghanim Scepter next. AoE last word's going to be cool. Are you reading chat? Yeah, I know. I saw it. I'm not going to respond. <laughs> Radiance bottom tower Fiat 5. Have you seen? Do you know, do you know what Fiat 500 Twitter is? No? Okay. It, it's, a, it's a whole, like, subculture of, uh... I guess, I guess the, the closest comparison is, like, footballers' wives kind of thing. But people who would want to be footballers' wives, you know? Is, is, that, is, that, is that kind of subculture is Fiat 500 Twitter, yeah. The Radiant have forsaken their That's a pretty tower. rough one. FN back into the Orchid next. And Bloodstone's going to tank him up. He's got Essence Ring as well. Incredibly difficult to even think about catching and killing this Storm Spirit right now. And the shift away from that top lane, all day is now grouping up with the rest of his squad. They've got Chrono in 30 seconds. They might be thinking of still just battling around an Ice Blast and maybe a Storm Initiation. But they, they really want to safeguard this, you know, this kind of bottom jungle area. Make sure that the entire team don't get in here too easily. But... Nimiga are able to spread out across the map quite nicely. You know, they're very efficiently farming everywhere else. Where's the party? They're unstoppable. Told you a storm was coming. Over here now. The dusk is always ready for a fight. Zap. I foresee the Radiant's top tower falling shortly. Zap. He's level 16. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Huge. And the fact they had so many options there is actually Namiga have smoked up looking to contest this. And Tusk, is he going to tank the gank again? It looks like it's going to be that way. Rolling Thunder not hitting Storm Spirit and FN will bounce out there. Quick uh, snowball back by Immersion. And he's dodged away from that. 
But the fact that Live to Win had so many options there, you know, they're going for a smoke gank into the jungle. Either they find Amigos 5 and they've got Chrono Ice Blast, or they find a pick off and go into Roshan, or they just go Roshan if they find nobody. That, that whole move was very nicely structured by them. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's yes. middle tower is learning to feed. That was Oracle. Fortified their growth. It's all coming crumbling apart now. And Troll Warlord, what's he up to? He's got Yash Basher working into BKB. He's bottom lane farming. But it doesn't feel like pre-BKB he's actually going to be able to accomplish anything. They try and catch the Void with chain stuns, but there's the global. And now Void, he has been bashed up, but he's got a turnaround potential here. Bashed again. Dream time walks it off, and they've killed off the Pango. Now the Chosen One's left isolated. The reaction's there from Live to Win, spot on. As they come in under that, that safety net of the global yet again. Oh, Sansa's going to die? Maybe. Oh, they've got the dust to reveal him, even under the Glimmer Cape. Yeah, but he's, like, he's pressed his button already. Does he care that he's died there? To pain. My favorite kill is the monster kill. Radiant's bottom tower is fading <laughs> fast. He's like a reverse spectre. Dyer's top tower is under hmm. attack. It fights for its life. Dyer's top tower is feeling its mortality. And now you're running into Storm. Yeah, and Storm's not going to be too far away from it either. Bloodstone Orchid Aegis. He's going to have that second life for another couple of minutes. So FN has a lot of freedom here. And they've got Solar. Yeah, that Solar you're mentioning just arrives now for Seneco. So even more damage amp and I'm over here. building up that Faceless Void to whack into people as they initiate in behind the Tier 2 top, blowing up the Slardar. And the Pangolin is trying to make something of this. But again, it's Storm Aegis. I don't think he minds if he loses the first life. The backup plan for Live to win is Chrono, which Dream has ready. Can they chain stun the Storm? They've got the route, the catch onto FM, but he balls over. Shadow Amulet there, but the Chrono catches and they're relocating out. It looks like they've bailed away from it. But they've got the Pango left alone in the tree, snowball through the Oracle. Make sure he can't save him, but he gets the Force Press off. So Pango can stand and fight. Immersion TP away and live to win no that a lot has been expended here by the dire team the Mega need to desperately scramble to find anything here. and Suneko is gonna be that one sacrifice given away by live to win as the rest of them do disengage oracle found by storm all the way in the back but that's it a big five on five fight well no four and five because silencer is of course not there there they, they want the void FN's just going to pick off the Pango solo mid. Yeah, I'm watching the Void being chased by three heroes. They don't catch him, and FN just gets a solo kill. And it looks like they have. Double he has gone in, and there's the global. And the Storm just zips back in on top of them. The IO's going to get shredded. Dream wax into this. Poor, poor troll. And the Chosen One, yet again, is left all alone. Four heroes in a row. That's a full team wipe. Oracle died not too long ago. That is massive for Liv to win. Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. No gale can snuff the flames.
Yeah, Slardar did have to... Yeah, not if you're a live to win fan. And Slardar spending buyback so early on in the game doesn't feel particularly good either. Next Roshan, two and a half minutes until fast spawn. Uh, oh my god, the Shiva's, Shiva's Guard. On, I thought he was going BKB, but he's like, nah, I don't need BKB. I'm going to go Shiva's Guard. Zap. Oh, long zip. See ya, Oracle. He false promises himself. Okay. Storm's out of there now. Low mana. Looks like Pango's still trying to give chase, but that's it. Nice sidestep from FN. And he turns and fights. A relocate in, but Troll and Io can't close the gap onto him, and they've got the backup now with Immersion and Old A. They're going to try and take him down, but the Snowball save comes through, and now Dream arrives. Three-man Chrono. In they go with FN outside. FN's going to get blown up here, though, as Pango just finds him, but it's a triple for Dream. And Amiga just bleeding out as they go all in for that one kill. Yes, they take the godlike streak, but T, was it worth it? Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's structures are fortified. My gratitude. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Troll? It's They're unstoppable. Uh, yeah. He has just died. He's back and, and he's gonna have a bit of a feed as well. Three heroes, quick succession. If you were a millennial, I mean, that's nothing. Lift him in a toying with them. Radiance Bottom Tower is fading fast. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, T. <laughs> For anyone who didn't know. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. No tree shall ever grow there. Let us fight. It's a sad time for for British economy and politics and everything. Let, please, let's not let's let's move, move swiftly on, shall we? Monster kill. Onage. Oh, see ya. Ravages of time. Io gets annihilated. And trolls farming triangle. Well, is Sla where, where is Slada going, actually? What's he up to? Is he going to go farm the other triangle? Oh, yeah. Money. Regeneration. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Yeah, look at where Oracle is drawing on the map, saying, here, you can farm over there, far away from our base. Because that's the only safe place you can be, and if they find you, it's not near our towers, so they can't go high ground. Push. Zip zap! Dyer's middle tower is under attack. No gale can snuff the flames. Dyer's top tower has fallen. The earth seems relieved. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. There is little it can do. <laughs> Yeah, it has to come out of, uh, out of like IO tethering him or something like that because they, they don't have, there's no load absorb, there's nothing on these supports to get them away from that silence. It is a real rough one, and right now I think IO and Oracle are wishing their spells worked on towers. Why can't I false promise this tier 3 top? Because there's nothing else I can do in this game. Let just. Let me tether the tower, please. Imagine tether, tether overcharge, bloodlust. Yes. <laughs> With glyph. Come and fight me. Like in Diatide. It has the the like golem guy in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, they find the slaughter. Only last. He got his mithril hammer, but he doesn't have buyback, and Roshan is now being taken. In comes Pango. He's got Agademons, but Dream's got a BKB and a Chrono. Hello, Pango. You stuck in my bubble now, buddy. Where have you gone? Is, is that where you call GG? <laughs> because you've just gone in there as a, like, Hail Mary play. He doesn't have buyback. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. Storm? Holy shit! He catches the IO. I, I thought that was going to just blow him up straight away, but it just missed on the damage. They still find him anyway, and now Troll, he tried to TP out, but Immersion found him with the shards and the snowball. FN and Dream, they're both here, and they're just going to toy with him a little bit. IO buys Bang to relocate in. They've got the Battle Trans forward, and Immersion is rooted, and he's taken down by the Troll, but that is all they'll get from it. Oh, really? Yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Doom is on the wind. Dyer's middle tower is learning to fear. Dyer's middle barracks are under Seems to have a lot of value. But how uh, Pango. Oh. Oh, Storm. Well, what's he up to? He's going deep into the base. Middle barracks are under attack. Ah, they're just going to take buildings now. Dyer's middle barracks have fallen. The creeps scatter in fear. Hand stop. Dyer's middle well, you did just now. You're the first and last. hopefully the last. Dyer's top barracks have fallen. Fate. You can take the next team fight, T. This one's yours. Go for it. Killing spree. Dominating, I guess. Double kill. Well, FN's got a double kill. <laughs> and Dream is just facing off against the Troll Warlord. A Troll saved by the False Promise and the Battle Trance, overlapping a little bit there, and they just take the Oracle out, so no more additional heals. And four heroes all around the Troll Warlord means he's dead and gone. GG's called. Cool. This has been a foregone conclusion for a long while. Radiant victory! in honor of the No. Do the speed talk.